Okay. Hi, Sunha. Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining us and agreeing to do this uh, introduction. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you uh, how you got interested in, the, in this specific uh, subject or topic. So basically, um, so I was um, based in Brussels. And um, when I was still studying uh, in my in my school, I I came across uh, uh, seeing uh, the, the Filipino domestic workers in the tramways, and um, so they were like part of my daily life, and I've noticed them because I saw them taking care of, you know, little, little boys and girls that had a very different English accent. Uh, with them, and and then I knew they were Filipino. My uncle actually were living uh, in the Philippines, and so I, I was a bit familiar also. And I heard about Filipino domestic workers, but it was not that obvious. I didn't know much about it, and um, so you know I just noticed it, and I was observing them sometimes and curious and curious about the fact that we don't know much about them. And then when a few, a few years later, um, at first I was, uh, I, I was willing to make, uh, to write a script uh, about uh, foreign nannies taking care of kids in Parisian families. And it was a book I wanted to adapt, but the rights were sold already. So I'd start some for, for, for research about, you know, different communities coming to Europe. Uh, and to work as nannies uh, and domestic workers. And so, you know, step by step, I, you know, got interested in, you know, the women from I Ivory Coast, but also North Korea, China, um, Haiti, you know, it was, uh, and I ended up reading this book by uh, Asuncion Fresno Zaflo, which, uh, who is, uh, a Filipino researcher based in Brussels, uh, based in Belgium, and she um, wrote a book called, but I don't know if there's a translation in English, but it's uh, Mothers Without Borders. And she's uh, writing, uh, this book moved me a lot, actually. And she's um, uh, so writing on the situation of the Filipino domestic workers uh, in Paris. And um, she is really uh, writing about her, their situation uh, uh, in a family angle. Uh, so she she talked to them, but also uh, the, the 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 husband left behind, or who is taking care of the, of uh, her children, and also. Um, you know, she's calling the mother who is taking care of the children uh, in the Philippines the temporary mother, she says, and also the um, the the way they try to keep the relationship alive. So she goes in the Philippines, interview you know the father, the kids, and everybody. And I found this approach very new because it was a really uh, a family uh, emotional you know uh, perspective, and not only in the economy and, uh, you know, number statistics. And she, it's the first time I heard about this system, uh, the Philippine government implemented, that is uh, official migration system. Uh, so I got very interested in, and um, I met her. And then uh, there is, uh, I, yeah, I, I decided to, to deep, uh, deepen the research search and that's how it all started yeah i mean it's interesting that the this shift um from kind of statistics or numbers to uh the the kinship networks or family networks uh, is it's a subtle shift but it's quite important because it actually uh um creates these segments of uh the population within uh europe or across the world that are seen primarily through their labor um, and are registered in some sense often as a threat. Uh, it actually um, uh, reveals them to be uh, them networks in themselves. Like uh, it, it, it draws your attention to everything that's being left behind and the effects that the movement required of their labor uh, has um, 
in in many ways. I mean, uh, the we, we'll talk about this a little bit more. But even the 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 Philippine government's uh, kind of establishment of an of an infrastructure that facilitates this migration is also quite fascinating, and it's where your film is situated in some sense. Um, but you know, the 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 remittance that these workers send back to the Philippines is so important that uh, governments there have actually uh, declared them heroes, uh, which is not a way you hear migrants spoken of at all in the in the West, in Europe, uh, or in the US, you know, but in, in their home countries, they're kind of venerated as such, because they're such integral parts of the economy. Um, so maybe uh, you could give us some sense of how you you sh you moved from idea to to film a little bit and what 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 the process for uh, making the film was. Sorry, the last part of your question uh, was uh, stopped. Yeah, Sorry. just uh, uh, describe the the approach that you take took to making the film. Uh, like, where did you situate it? Site locations, uh, subject identifications, uh, those sorts of. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just for coming back to what you were saying, uh, indeed, I totally agree with uh, what you were saying, you know, with the statistic and the fact that people are seen, you know, with, through labor uh, perspective. And actually, the, so, uh, what was interesting in my uh, process of making this film is that when I saw when I first read this book, uh, I r didn't realize uh, why I was, you know, also that moved and uh, it's something that I discovered at the end of the process. But the fact that, you know, I have uh, my personal story that I moved from Korea to France when, um, uh, when I was young and um, I have experienced kind of uh, uh, this uh, cultural gap and this uh, um, affective range because I left uh, I, I left Korea suddenly and uh, uh, with my mother and I, I left I lived uh, for like 20 years without seeing my father and it's something that you know like uh, being uh, those women that are separated with their families it was something uh, that moved me very much and in a way talk to me, you know, even if my situation is not theirs at all. And this is something that I discovered only at the end of the film, I think, when I mm -hmm. did the film. And it was something like during the editing or during the shooting. So it's sometimes very interesting how, you know, it's a situation, of course, uh, politically and also regarding labor and migration of women uh, touched me a lot. And I, I you know, I, I found um i mean not right you know in certain um uh, extent and um but then you have different layers you know in your motivations mm -hmm. that you can discover while making the film so that's just what i want to add and regarding the so the process i did uh, so after discovering all this and i was going to korea at the time um for uh, holidays and you know their low cost a flight you know going to the philippines it's not so far and so i decided to do my first you know uh, scouting myself mm -hmm. so without funding because i wanted to know if really you know i wanted to start something uh, out of this research and then um so that's how you know i started you know calling all these agencies training centers and from belgium you know and it was quite tough but <laughs> i ended up there did the the, the first scouting and and I, that's when i decided really to to start so then uh i searched for funding so it's, it's a long process and then i was able to go back there and do further research mm -hmm. um and yeah so i, I spent uh, quite a lot of time um what like observing myself all the process the women are uh, going through and also interviewing women that went abroad that were uh, doing the training so it was um, yeah mainly that can you uh, speak a little bit more about these training centers uh, you know introduce the audience who may not be familiar with what they are to uh, basically what they are and what their function is and how they how they work so so basically the um, the in the film we see a training center mainly mm -hmm. um 
in which they are trained um, technically also like for the chores and and their attitude and to go abroad as domestic worker overseas uh, but the, the 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 so this is uh 215 hours of training but you have the whole process uh that that is longer than what you see in the film so you have different type of seminars like pre-departure seminars you have uh, um, the, the recruitment agency that is quite important or so that um, uh, put you that find you you know the employer uh, organize interviews with the employers um, that follow up with uh, you know salary things like that and then you have also the welfare part um, so you have also language courses uh, the courses regarding the, the the culture of the destination of the country of destination uh, of the employer so depending so other if destination it's, uh, specific courses yeah like it can be for arab countries for uh, asian countries so it is a uh, specific uh courses so so it's quite long it's like months you know to and you have to process your visa you have to you know uh have all the <clears throat> you know the paper saying that you got the exam because then you are uh, examinated when you you have to pass the exam uh, but what I filmed is uh, really uh, the, this training uh, of uh, technical uh, domestic chores and also uh, your attitude towards uh, the employers. So this is the, the, the main uh, process that I filmed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I also wanted to ask you, and I think you may have answered uh, some of this. I had one quick factual question. When you said recruiters, are the recruiters also, is that also a government process um, or are the recruiters uh, private companies? Uh, they're uh, mostly private companies. But the, but so the training they is can a... be like... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the agencies, the recruitment agencies are private. I, I, maybe there's some the state but they are mostly private and sometimes there are also independent recruiters working with agencies and you're also the agencies abroad mm -hmm. they are brokers uh, and the, the the training centers are mostly private and but they are accredited or not by the government so they have to uh, respect the, the the official program of education training and the, the, the training center that I, I filmed and the one I wanted to film uh, was an accredited one, of course. Okay, okay. So it's interesting to think that, that now there's, a, there's an entire economy uh, around the kind of preparation of these overseas workers to go overseas. Uh, that's yeah, uh, I, yeah, in the Philippines totally. as well. That, that's uh, what I was uh, interested in. I, 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 I mean, I could have focused on the one that are illegal or, you know, uh, but I, I, I was mainly interested in these training centers that are legal and, yeah, do they are, that are accredited or so. Did you have any trouble gaining access to them? Was there any resistance from the point of view of the people who run the centers? Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, uh, most of them were yeah entertain me uh, very well and I could I could I mean they accommodated me uh, you know very well and um, but some of them didn't want me you know to to film um, and yeah okay um, so uh, one of the things that I found really um, uh, interesting about your film was and and one of the reasons why I think it is a good accompaniment to Stephanie Komilang's films and uh, that that are part of float at uh, the exhibition at uh, warehouse um, is that um, the exploitation and abuse that these women uh, face uh, and endure um, is never really represented in a in kind of like a real quote unquote a direct sense um, Instead, it's actually recounted through testimony, which is again a, a, a kind of a familiar uh, strategy of kind of humanist uh, uh, documentary filmmaking. But more interestingly, it's also um, uh, addressed through um, reenactment or these role-playing sessions where uh, they are uh, they work through certain scenarios that they may face uh, uh, through role-play. Um, 
And um, the strategy actually reminded me of uh, um, a, a really startling film by uh, Joshua Oppenheimer from 2012, uh, which looked at uh, um, the anti-communist pogroms in Indonesia in the mid 1960s, and that actually uh, attempted to kind of um, acknowledge and then be begin to unpack the trauma, the repressed trauma of that episode by asking the perpetrators in some sense to reenact their acts of torture or acts of killing. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the, um, the, the, what the possibilities of this, this kind of structure of role play that's part and parcel of the training that these women receive uh, as a documentary strategy. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when I did, you know, uh, the the world premiere uh, of the film, it was in Locarno uh, in in la, la, in two thousand nineteen, and um, the, one of the programmer, Julian Ross, uh, told me that what uh, interested him, you know, a lot about the film and these uh, these scenes, you know, with the with the the acting, was that he said, um, in a way, it's it's for him, it was um uh, he called it pre-enactment and not re-enactment as mm -hmm. they're uh like enacting like preparing you know themselves to be deployed and in these uh, role-playing exercises they are faced uh, uh put in the situation that they will that they may uh, face abroad but they're not sure and they're hoping having the best employers as you know they, they uh, could be and so uh, I found it very interesting um, uh, as a perspective and I mean it's both because uh, some of them uh, in the scenes you see some of them have experience uh, abroad uh, mm -hmm. something and they use it in this reenactment mm -hmm. and they confronted sometimes with some first timers that have never been abroad and sometimes the first timer is uh, embodying the 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 role of uh, the employee so and when i you know the more I was scouting and i was trying to to find a way i really wanted to make this film and of course when you make a film you you know little by little you choose your perspective and you you eliminate also a lot of what because you can make you know like 10 films you know out of this uh, topic and and I realized that um, this specific moment when this woman, uh, so because in the training center, they are brought by the, the recruitment agencies and they, some of them have already an employer abroad, some of them are about, but they are in the process already. And mm -hmm. they arrive at the training center and they, you know, they, so in this training center, they, uh, they sleep, uh, you know, in dormitories, they sit on the spot they don't have access to their um, cell phones because they are trained already uh, not to contact their um, their families that is so often in something, that is often something that uh, they face when they're working as well that their uh, employers will take away their their cell phones and and so they're totally yeah they're prepared for it in some sense Totally, and uh, the the because and because the uh, what the the training center said is that uh, the one of the first reason why they they break the contract is homesickness, mm -hmm. and um, so by you know like confiscating their uh, cell phones, they already you know face them with this aspect of their uh, work abroad, their job abroad, and then um, this specific moment when they're uh, so they're still in the Philippines, but they don't they cannot reach their family. They're uh, together. They're doing the chores. They are uh, training, mm -hmm. and they are about to leave, but they are not. They have not left yet, and they are not abroad yet. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed that in this uh, specific time uh, of their uh, migration process, uh, they you know they are. Um, it's like uh, to me it was like you know when you are at the airport and you're waiting you know to fly but you didn't and so you are in between a situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, when i first uh, saw um during the scouting uh women doing the the role play exercises i was very struck by different thing because 
the women they are acting you know it's a play and they are acting it's not real first i was very impressed by uh, the fact that the women were so um how do you say it? so uh they're so easily um uh, uh playing the role uh, acting as an employer that mm -hmm. is uh you know mean tyrannic mm -hmm. uh it, it was so so amazing i mean uh, even in the film you know you you see them uh, scolding and everything and just so real that i was amazed and um and also when i saw the you know the the woman in the situation of uh, the employee uh sometimes facing for instance uh humiliating situations uh there were on her on their face there was um uh we could i could read you know the emotion of the woman and even if it's uh you know it's not it's not uh, the real situation of the real life i could feel you know the whole you know um uh you know like i, I could feel how it was affecting them mm -hmm. the the humiliation situation but also uh, thinking that that it could happen to her uh, abroad and uh, what they would do you know and i i found it so in this moment the emotion was so real mm -hmm. and at this moment i really uh connected uh, this with um a play by jean genet a french writer uh, that i've read before called the maids mm -hmm. i don't know if it's english it's the maids but uh, mm -hmm. i guess yeah, I and um it's the the two domestic workers that are acting uh as if one was the tyrannic employer and the the, the other the employee mm -hmm. and they are really acting you know and with the most humiliating situation are acted and in the end they uh they feature uh the the killing of the of the employer and it reminded me really much this because they are playing and they're playing with a lot of pleasure you know mm -hmm. uh like a revenge and uh, when i saw them acting it was very striking to me so that's how i got into this yeah i mean for me uh some of those scenes uh a, a they they seem to express a uh, a certain well on one hand of, of course they kind of uh allow you to access that moment uh this moment of humiliation or of uh, uh or exploitation um uh without actually uh they, they allow you to um, access the uh, affective universe of that moment without actually kind of uh, exploiting the women by documenting that moment. Uh, so they're quite powerful as a tool with that. But uh, especially when they take on the roles of their uh, abusers, uh, there's also a, a, a it, it also gives them a certain amount of agency that I think also comes through in a very subtle way when they in the in the moments where they're they're being humiliated. Uh, you know, you get the sense that they are uh, building up defense mechanisms as they are going through the practice, uh, which will help them in the real life situation uh, they face in the future. But there's also, to me, a certain uh, quality of therapy to it too. It's like, uh, especially when they occupy the roles of their employers, uh, there is something therapeutic about that, because something about revisiting past uh, uh, trauma and then kind of, uh, uh, Acknowledging it and then by acknowledging it, it releasing it in some sense as well. Um, but I think your reference to the Jean Genet play is uh, is is really uh, quite nice. I'm gonna revisit that text in <laughs> in relationship to the film. Um, okay, so just to move forward a little bit, um, I um, was wondering if we, uh, you could talk a little bit about uh, about these strategies in relationship to specific moments in the film and. Uh, and, and so the film opens with this, uh, um, I timed it, it was a three minute long shot uh, with a static camera, a beautifully framed, uh, 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 perfectly lit um, of a domestic worker cleaning a toilet. And um, um, all you hear, all you see and all you hear are basically uh, the sounds and the motions of her labor. Um, and, you know, this is, of course, a labor that is uh, invisible. You know, it happens within the private space of the home. Uh, it is often intentionally kept uh, invisible, like, uh, you know, with, uh, 
domestic workers are not often allowed out into public space and they're kept sequestered within the home. It's also um, the, the length of the shot, I think also indexes a very important aspect of uh, domestic labor or maintenance labor, uh, which is kind of uh, its uh, repetitive quality, you know, where uh, you basically do the same work again and again as a way of maintaining a status quo. So this idea of, uh, of, of surplus value being created through labor is not that. It is a sur surplus value that from the very beginning is invisible in some sense. It's the, uh, it's the, surplus, the surplus value of uh, resisting uh, decay or dirt or entropy. And I think that the three minuteness of that shot really encapsulates that. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this, uh, you know, this, um, the, the kind of structure of the training that these uh, domestic workers get in relationship to this opening sequence and maybe even why, why you chose to open with that sequence and how, how you went about shooting it. Uh, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's a long, uh, maybe a bit long answer. Uh, so I think that the, this, uh, this shot is even longer than three minutes. <laughs> so, but, um, <clears throat> it was, uh, very curious because, it, um, ah, is my internet connection okay? Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, at the editing of the film, uh, I think this shot was one of the first shots that we put, you know, in the timeline, on the timeline. And that oh, that never moved, you know, uh, opposite to all the other shots that we, you know, worked uh, for months. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting um, because it, it was obvious for us in a way that uh, this the shot was a kind of statement. Um, it appeared to be like that because um, yeah, I don't know if I reveal exactly how it was shot, but there was something before, you know, something and to introduce it and everything. And we cut all of this because we mm -hmm. wanted to keep it very much, you know, like, like conf I, I don't know if I would say confronting, but questioning and, you know, that it raises some question in the head mm -hmm. of the viewer without being in a context, without knowing what is happening exactly. And the fact that we show this woman in this situation, she's cleaning the toilet. And it also is, it was first a statement of, of uh, what is doing the, this job? You know, what is this uh, domestic work job is cleaning the toilet. And as you say, so in the film, um, you know, the, 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 t the trainer also says, uh, you know, how it's doing the dirty job, you know, uh, this is the job and we think it's that, that, no, this is the job. This is uh, doing the dirty job is what is their job what, that will be abroad and it will be tough. It will be difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, she's talking about the fact that in the bowl of the toilet, they already see the dollars. And so that it, that it can keep them on, on, you know, on going, you know, uh, with the difficulty, there are difficulties abroad, but you know, they will see it. it, it so it's a lot about toilets and, um, and showing this at the beginning uh, was a very good uh, introduction for us. And also, um, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Chantal Ackerman's work. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I was very much uh, impacted by Jean Dillman uh, as a woman and as a cinematographer and uh, as a director. And um, what, you know, in this film, she's saying, um, that she wanted to give, you know, a cinematographic existence to these um, gestures. Do you say gestures? Like, mm -hmm. you know, this, uh, and um, uh, with, uh, you know, this woman doing all this domestic work, you know, every day. And to me, it was very important, uh, even if I didn't link it, you know, exactly at this moment with her film, but. Uh, it was very important to me to show, uh, you know, that she's cleaning the toilet and that we, you know, that we wa we we watch her doing it, and in a long uh, long sequence. And um, you know, some um, some viewer told me like, oh yeah, during this scene, I was wondering who is cleaning. By the way, who is cleaning my toilet? You know. <laughs> it could, uh, it, it yeah. Some some people told me that. And so it, it is something that I wanted to, yeah, state at this, um, 
and also the emotional yeah uh, even if i don't reveal what is happening but um uh what's happening to this woman have been told to me many times in interviews during mm -hmm. the scouting mm -hmm. so it's also something that i wanted to yeah to put uh, at the beginning of the film before the title it's also a wonder, wonderfully ambiguous shot, and as a big, uh, its ambiguity is, I think, what raises a lot of the questions. Um, it is, in some sense, the shot that we would expect it to begin with, because it's a shot of uh, uh, a domestic laborer doing what uh, the subject of the film is, in some sense. Uh, but after you watch the rest of the film and you realize that the that the film that the focus of the film is in these training centers where there are a lot of these role-playing workshops, it, it makes you completely re-question where you started off, whether uh, this shot is actually a shot of um, like real labor or whether it's a shot of uh, uh, a moment within one of these workshops or within one of these uh, 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 moments of role-play. And, and I think that's really, it, it's quite powerful because it forces you to um, question actually uh, uh, every experience that, or every experience that you have both filmically, but also in real life, maybe I'm making a little too much of it, but also it, it, it makes you question uh, your capacity for empathy uh, with, with these, uh, uh, with these uh, women. You know, it, 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 I don't know, it left me very unsure about my ability to kind of empathize with them completely, like that I would never be able to know their lives or, uh, be able to understand what they've been through. Uh, and for me, that's a, actually a really powerful way of setting up the film uh, and everything that comes uh, uh, after. Um, so, um, you know, this, the, the, this strategy of role play kind of constantly blurs this line between uh, fact and fiction. Um, and it's an interesting approach for a documentary that uh, at least aims to give visibility to uh, a largely marginalized group, you know, and draw attention to uh, the kind of like exploitation and abuse they are subjected to. It's not a traditional do documentary approach. Um, so I was wondering if you, and uh, you've touched a little bit on this as well, but if you could uh, maybe uh, expand a little bit more on whether this line was something you were aware of quite early within the filmmaking process and whether you played with it uh, through the filmmaking process uh, um, to, to draw out certain stories or certain ideas or certain themes or even certain politics and ethics. Um. Yeah, I, I, this, uh, what you're talking about, this blur uh, about uh, fact and fiction was, uh, of course, uh, my intention from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered this uh, role play exercises, uh, uh, I, I found it um, very powerful visually and that it, it would uh, uh, let, um, let me uh, yeah, as you say, play uh, with it, and so that we can have access also to things that we wouldn't have access otherwise, mm -hmm. and uh, about the reality of a job uh, in situation, mm -hmm. and um, and in, and all the time in the perspective of this woman, uh, it's just very important. I wanted uh, that because when they act, you know, it's their perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, how they experience it or how they are experiencing it. And uh, actually there are, so starting from these uh, role play exercises, uh, I tried to uh, build something with these uh, rooms also that you see in the, in the film, you have this, all this label room, right? You have the, the kitchen, you have the, the bathroom, the, 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 the living room and where the, they, they act. And um, I wanted the film uh, to be, as I said, you know, really already there, you know, like to show them as if they were already abroad. So to have this kind of uh, blur between uh, now and and there uh, the in the film, yeah. And so uh, uh, because it's really there, uh, it was really a state of mind. Like when they were, you know, being. Uh, a role or having a course, then they would share together, you know, like uh, they share their, their own experiences and the, the sorority was building up 
uh, uh, between them. Uh, they were uh, sharing tips there were uh, sh uh, for those who never left for those who left already and like uh, how did you do in this situation how would you do you know and so that was uh, to reflect that mm -hmm. and um and little by little because i was with them uh because the group was amazing i, I mean the you know the their performance is just amazing i don't know that they, they were really in front of the camera, like someone else or them, or profoundly them. Themselves, you know, they, there was a, they had a real easy, you know, way of being, just being in front of the camera. And um, that's how, uh, in a way, that, because for instance, the, the scene you see when they're alone talking, like uh, one of them is uh, talking about what she's going to leave behind um the other one about her past experience when she's talking uh, in front of a window uh i i it happened really because it was them because they were also suggesting things and mm. because i saw you know they, they they were very expressive very uh motivated by you know making this film and so it happened really because it was them uh so i didn't really think about it in advance it happened with them Mm -hmm. And um, so the yeah, so that's how I uh, try to build it. Yeah, there is, there is something about uh, quite um, quite powerful about the act of anticipation. Like homesickness has this kind of uh, retrospective view that allows it to kind of devolve into nostalgia and romance. You know, it's about what's left behind. But this act of anticipation of speculation of uh, it suggests a, a level of preparedness, you know, like I, I can face whatever is coming and I can also imagine my own future, which which I think is actually a really interesting way of uh, of approaching or telling a migrant story because a migrant story is often about what they have left behind and the sacrifices mm. they make to be where they are rather than uh, yeah. thinking through the ways in which they have prepared themselves for uh, the step that they are taking. Um, um, I wanted to... Uh, ask you a little bit about uh, the look and feel of the film visually. Um, to me, there are moments within the film that almost uh, feel kind of uh, dark and almost dystopic, like a little, uh, they verge on science fiction. Maybe this is the speculative aspect of the workshops uh, or the training. Um, can you speak a little bit about the filmmaking approach, like lighting, uh, uh, blocking, those sorts of uh, uh, things? If my question is completely off base, feel free to say so too. <laughs> no, sorry, I think I didn't understand the um, the first word you said. Uh, the the when you said the the visually, yeah, I think it's, maybe uh, it's a word I don't understand. Like uh, speculative, like it's the the film has a kind okay. of a very dark. Uh, um, there are moments within the film that where that 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 are quite dark, and I don't mean like subject matter. I mean like visually. Uh, okay. Which again, uh, for uh, if you think about a traditional documentary approach, uh, the the focus is on on revealing, right? So so kind of like these these moments of uh, of kind of darkness where you can't see as clearly as one would think you should. Uh, for me, they stuck in my head. Uh, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Um, or maybe you're talking also about the, for instance, the yeah, the woman in front of the window or. Uh, when I, I was talking about this uh, kind of monologue they have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's something that happened like in this light because the you know the sunset was very, very quick in the Philippines, like mm -hmm. within like twenty minutes you had this, and uh, this light also um, in a way uh, offered a kind of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. And at this moment, uh, the 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 woman that you see in the film uh, was um, it was a kind of a, an inner voice that was mm -hmm. coming out of her, and it, that was very interesting. Um, and also in the end, for instance, when you have all these you know uh, uh, dark sequence when they they are on the bus and with this flooding street, you know, with all the water. And they are in this uh, bus, uh, ready to leave. Um, 
yeah i don't know i don't know if i really had a kind of um intentional you know something about you know like dark images uh i yeah i wouldn't say that and in 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 the in the country i had some you know for instance all the the you know the scene you have uh, uh, in the training center in the in the model apartment of the employers was um even set to uh be more lightened as okay. you know the kind of a soap opera lighting you okay. know that was a yeah, yeah. uh what intention but um but um yeah i i i don't know if i <laughs> I don't know if I, um, yeah, I have something very interesting to say. Yeah, you. no, I, I, sorry, I, I'm, I'm actually sorry. Th thinking back on, uh, on the question, and I think it comes from the opening sequence and the closing sequence, which are both kind of at nighttime. And the opening sequence is not, not the sequence before the, the title screen, but the sequence right after where you approach the, the training center. And it's through these waterlogged, like flooded streets and, I, I I think for me there was a very apocalyptic feel to that. Then the the feel of the the sequences near the end that are at night uh, have the same quality. And maybe that's why. But I... but but it's true because uh, for instance when I think about the monologue scene, you know, it's mostly at night mm -hmm. when they are you know they 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 did their their chores, you know, they're more quiet, and that's when things was happening. Mm -hmm. And so it's mostly at night, and it's the time when they took this time, you know, to reflect on themselves. And in a way, the movie, it was also, you know, to give them this time they will never have, you know, when they're going to live abroad. And so at night, it was the best moment in a way. And so it's yeah. always a dark scene. Yeah, and yeah. also be just before leaving, you have all this water, you know, and it's dark, that's true. That is, um, uh, has link with the end, uh, with all this uh, flood also. Mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah I, yeah I i i had another question so you know we get a pretty good sense of who who the who the women who are receiving the training is but can you speak a little bit about the women who are giving the training uh who run these workshops who run these centers because the entire universe is all women you you, you never see a, a male figure if i'm not right if i'm yeah not at one moment we we hear a male trainer yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not that we intentionally, you know, want to cut him, you know, from the editing, but yeah. it happened that, you know, he was not giving so many courses and um, yeah, it happened that we had to cut him, but uh, it was to leave only, you know, the woman in the film. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is a male presence in one of the workshops. There is like, uh, uh, you know, a, the, one of the employers is clearly a male figure. Like in in the one of the roles. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise it, it is largely uh, women. But could you speak a little bit about the women who work in in the centers, run the centers, conduct these workshops? Yeah. yeah. So um, I chose this center because um, I felt that um, that the director of the center and the trainer would really um, let me uh, uh, meet the woman that uh, I was going to film. Um, the, the director herself, uh, is a former, uh, OFW. She, um, worked many years abroad mm -hmm. and she, um, built, built this center and now is working in this business and a few of, uh, the, of the, a few of the trainers or so are ex abroad. So mainly actually they're ex abroad and, um, and this was, uh, something that interested me a lot because it shows how complex is you know this system and um, when i first went uh, scouting i really had in mind because i've read a lot of things and but i haven't seen it you know by myself and i really had in mind that you know the there was like the, the good that are the one you know living uh, abroad as domestic worker and the the bad in a way the one who are training them and uh, I discovered it was more complex than that. And mm -hmm. um, for instance, the, the, I really like the, the trainer that we see in the film. She had a very tough experience abroad. Uh, she left when she was 14. And uh, she, you know, uh, 
yes, she's, you know, participating in this system and she's training, you know, women and they're going to go abroad, but she uh, really uh, was caring for them. And, uh, and it, it happens too, you know, um, she really tried to transmit them, you know, how she did, you know, how she, uh, she faced, you know, this difficult situation herself and tried to transmit uh, it to them. Yeah. And, um, and it was striking to me. Yeah. I, I, I was not expecting that actually, because yeah. I was not imagining that, you know, the trainer would be, uh, XOFWs or so, you know, and, um, and she, she touched me a lot or so, but, you know, when I asked the, um, the director, for instance, but, uh, what do you think about the whole system? Because, uh, you know, these women are sent abroad and it's, uh, it's such, you know, uh, harrowing. It's, it's, it, I mean, it's, uh, such a difficult situation for them to face. And with all these, uh, abuse, you know, that they're facing, it's, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, uh, a big issue and she tells me that she would prefer that it stops you know she's not you know uh to encourage this uh, she she would like it to stop uh so yeah. she yeah um because her, herself she suffered from from this yeah yeah so basically to to figure out ways where uh the Philippines becomes self-sustaining as an economy so that uh, uh, people don't have to go abroad in search of uh, work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, that, you know, the, that in the, the country, the, the salary are uh, raised. Yeah. Uh, raised up. Yeah. Um, because the salary is so low that uh, yeah. even those who have a, like, you know, a decent job, they have to, Still, you know, go abroad as as the age. So uh... it's also interesting uh, in terms of relationships between your film and uh, and Stephanie Komilang's uh, uh, films as well. Uh, um, they both show a kind of uh, unexpected, if not, I wouldn't say accidental. I would say unexpected community. Like you used the word earlier, sorority, um, and it's it's the case in both. Like within these. Uh, within these training centers, there is a, a kind of a community of domestic workers that's created. Uh, I wouldn't say that they have the political clout of a union, but it has that same sort of solidarity. Uh, you know, it's, it's a sisterhood, but it's also about uh, uh, laborers uh, working together to kind of like uh, protect themselves from uh, future exploitation or abuse. Um, and, and that is actually quite powerful. And then there's also this intergenerational quality that comes through between the the trainers and the and and the the people who are preparing to go abroad for the first time, uh, from you know seasoned veterans in some sense and 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 new uh, people about to embark on their first experiences, uh, uh, it, it it's quite uh, it's quite touching. Um, so I wanted to uh, shift a, a, a focus to the to a sequence near the end of the film, uh, which uh, was was was. Uh, heart wrenchingly devastating when I watched it, where you you see one of uh, the domestic workers, uh, basically as a mother, uh, trying uh, trying to say goodbye to her sleeping child, and and it's a it's again a, a fairly long sequence, um, and there is this hesitation, you know, this is a hesitation to say goodbye. It's a hesitation that anyone who's lived abroad from family faces or feels every time they have to leave uh, leave their loved ones behind. Um, and the in the emotion or the affect of the moment is even heightened more so by the fact that it's an innocent child and 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 and, and the child is sleeping and is probably going to wake up and their mother is going to be gone and they're not going to know that it's gone uh, the the mother has left and anyway I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it but um, you know so you you basically show a mother who's sh trying sharing a few last intimate moments. Uh, before they go overseas to actually provide care to others. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this, uh, this shot. I mean, to me, it feels like the, it, it's kind of like the opening sequence. It's, uh, it's the most quote unquote real shot within the film, um, kind of capturing a real moment as it's unfolding in uh, real time. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the, that shot and, uh, 
and your decisions around that shot? Yeah, actually, um, as I told you before, um, the, the film I have made, that I made, uh, was really made according to the group that I met. So it was really back and forth. And I was not intending at all to go to the, their families and shoot, you know, uh, in their family. I was mainly interested in the training as it, as a, you know, as a, as a process of their migrations, the dismigration system and what mm -hmm. the state has implemented, you know. And so I, I was really not interested, but when I met them, I realized, um, yeah, it, it, it's the people I met and um, by chance, uh, two of them were living during uh, our shooting. And um, there is um, a woman who was uh, when they were exchanging and you know, talking together and uh, she was uh, a first timer and she would talk a lot about you know because she was she she was um, living in the in the mountains mm -hmm. uh, and a few hours from the training center and she was really from the mountain so she was she would uh, you know tell a lot of stories about her youth uh, how she lived there so how she knows also this nature you know and and I, I, and so she was sharing it with uh, those who were from the city, you know, and I was thinking it was very beautiful how she was talking about, you know, this, um, her uh, surrounding environment that she was living. And I was thinking maybe, I was thinking that it was good to show it that, um, so when we went to the, the, so it's not this shot specifically, but when you see this woman walking you know, in the mountain just before, uh, she leaves the the child. Uh, I think it's one of the the unique, you know, really not uh, a shot in nature. You know, we mm. don't have any other shot, and it's a moving shot. You know, it's a, we follow her, you know, with the camera, and we see all this beauty and to you know to show because she she would say also that it was where she feels good. You know, it's where she she go to resource herself. You know, and when she has problems, you know, and and to show that this contrast, you know, between all the scene we've seen, you know, of this scene we we saw in the film, in this apartment, and sometimes we know that the brother won't have any, you know, day off, and to show all this beauty, this nature, it gives a contrast, you know, between what they're going to leave, and and so we followed two of them, you know, um, at their place uh, in the countryside, and um, and this woman who is leaving the child, so it was really this. This shot with nature, mm -hmm. what they're going to live as a you know their country uh, environment, but also their uh, loved ones. So mm -hmm. it was really you know to and I would be even hesitant you know, during the editing, um, either whether I keep it or not. But then it I, I yeah I found that it was good to um, to show it you know. Uh, as I mean, a in some sense, it's image. a in some sense, it's a it's it's a kind of a very poignant testament to their sacrifice. To... Yeah, and also, you know, uh, I was thinking, you know, emotion can raise, you know, political thought and ideas. And um, one day, one of the uh, viewer told me, like, in this shot, when uh, she was faced with this mother, you know, leaving her her kid, you know, and that was so harrowing, and she said. Uh, I saw then, uh, at this moment, I saw the consequence of our capitalist world, you know, uh, the fact that a woman in a part of the world has to leave a kid, you know, behind mm -hmm. for many years, you know, to be able to make a living. So yeah. I was thinking, yeah, that's good. I, I was very happy to hear that because then it was, uh, yeah, the emotion who, who brought, you know, to raise this idea. Great. Well, thank you so much for all of your time and your uh, wonderful insights, and 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 finally, of course, for your amazing film. Um, and, thank you so uh, much. Uh, and yeah, for for all your questions. You're most welcome. Uh, I'm 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 sad that you weren't able to join us in the UAE. Uh, you know that would have been uh, a great experience. Uh, I think all around. But uh, but yeah, thank you again.